friends. Now, first this morning, more than uh, half of the new jobs created in the UK in the last year went to non-UK nationals from the EU, others to uh, non-UK nationals from outside the uh, UK. That's according to figures released yesterday by the Office of National Statistics. That's the ONS. The ONS said that 409,000 more people are in work than a year ago. The number of non-UK nationals from the EU working in the UK increased by 224,000. They now total 2.15 million. So, EU migrants made up 55% of the increase in employment in the last year. Now the, now, the figures have been seized upon by those campaigning for us to leave the European Union. Former Work and Pension Secretary Ian Duncan Smith had this to say. The truth is that uh, it's Brits on low pay and those out of work who feel the consequences of uncontrolled migration. And then he said, the only way to take back control of our borders is to vote leave on June the 23rd. Uh, Francis O'Grady, let's uh, just look at some of these figures a little bit. One in six jobs in the UK, 5.2 million out of a total workforce of 35 Point one, thirty-one point five million, are now held by people who were born abroad. Does that have no effect on wages or job prospects? Well, it doesn't, according to the London School of Economics uh, report that we saw published, uh, which showed there wasn't any harm. But of course, um, of but course, what do you of think? course, people worry about wages. Well, what I think is is the real threat to livelihoods and our economy isn't immigration; it's it, the risk of a, a Brexit. That may be true, but I want to talk about these job figures to get, yeah. as a general secretary of the TUC, your perspective is interesting uh, on them. Four hundred and thirteen thousand new jobs created in the past year but 80 percent went mm. to people born outside the united kingdom 80 mm. percent mm. does that have no effect on wages or job prospects oh i think we need to be very clear that migrant workers aren't the cause of low pay they're the victims of low pay and if we're going to tackle the causes of low pay then we need to get tough on business greed we need to make sure that people have a proper mm. living wage that under 25 year olds mm. aren't excluded from the higher minimum wage that's the kind of action we need to take and of course we need strong mm. trade unions in areas like construction where too because the migrants aren't joining unions uh, well, in fact, quite a few are. How in many? fact, uh, well, I haven't got the figure for you. No, because you, but by and large, they don't. Lots of organising do campaigns. Oh no, you look at our general council. I think you'll see generations. No, of no, I mean so. the ones that have come in in the past couple of years. They're not immediately rushing to join any of your unions. Well, a lot of migrant workers are in precisely those areas mm. of the economy where we find it hard to organise exactly. because they're zero hours, so, high turnover, but, and full self-employment. Those are the roots of the problems. But let me get get the, the, let me get this. There are now. 2.2 million uh, European Union citizens working in the United Kingdom. It's doubled in five years. It used to be just over a million. It's now just over 2 million in five years. Are you arguing that that huge increase in labour coming to this country has had no effect on wages? Uh, I don't think there's any evidence to show it has. But what I would but, say, hang on, what I would say is that there are areas in food companies, food manufacturing companies, construction sites, hotel and catering, mm. where some bad employers have deliberately gone over to Eastern Europe, hired mm. labour on agency contracts and used them to undercut pay. We know that has happened. Indeed. So there are 1.7 million people in this country looking for work but unable to find yeah. it, 1.7 million. And are you telling me that a rise of a million more EU citizens coming to this country to work has no effect on their ability, the, the 1.7 million, to find work? I no think, effect? I think what I'm telling you is that the real issue here is how do we rein in those bad employers who use workers from overseas to undercut local workers and undermine R union right. agreements. I, I understand that, so but, you've been, but people have been solution. calling that for years. I'm trying to work out how, given that we're just shy of two million people still looking for work, they're looking for work, but unable yeah. to find it. Yeah. And over a million from the EU alone, put aside those yeah. who are coming in from outside the EU, which actually has flatlined in, mm -hmm. in terms of numbers in recent years, big rise has been from the EU, that that huge influx of labour, unprecedented in mm -hmm. our history, 
in mm. terms of its size, has no effect on those in this country on low pay or without a job. The real effect is whether or not we get tough on greedy employers, whether or not we invest in our infrastructure so we create decent, well-paid yes, but, jobs. But with respect, that's a generalised thing. I'm, tra I'm trying to work out because services. these numbers are huge. I mean, let's take those particularly who have been doing low-paid jobs. Mm. Uh, Romanians and Bulgarians have been allowed to come here since 2014, unimpeded now because that's when they became mm. sort of full members of the free movement mm. of Labour. How many have come in since then? Oh, you tell me. I haven't quarter got of a million Romanians and Bulgarians mm. now working in this country. I think we can both agree that most of them, not all, but most of them are doing low-paid work. Absolutely. Do you, does that have no effect on depressing the wages of those of our citizens already on low pay? Only if you let employers get away with it. And politicians don't need to let employers get away with it. No, but they always have in, in some... Even the last Labour government took almost nobody to court for not paying the minimum wage. I think there were about 10 uh, con convictions yeah, uh, on and that. we've had this government introduce but employment you, tribunal fees but, to but make here's it the other, for workers to get justice. The latest influx, the latest figures, aren't actually coming from Poland and Eastern Europe, mm. or even so much from Romania and Bulgaria. They're coming from what you might call the old E15, mm. the, the Frances, the Italys, the Portugals, the Spains. And they might not be doing quite as low-wage work as mm. some of the ones we've been talking about. Huge increase in the past year, 250,000. Mm. That has no effect on our labour market? Uh, in itself, that isn't the issue. I think what we have to do is ask, why, why, have we, why have we got six million workers in Britain earning less than the living wage? Why haven't we got a decent industrial strategy? Well, if we keep on jobs? bringing labour in in this quantity, it will be a long while before they ever get to that. You know, you know enough about well, economics to know that if you massively increase yeah. the supply of something, yeah. as we have done in recent years, the price falls. It does if you allow employers to get away with it. It's not the case in every country that immigration drags down wages. In fact, that London School of Economics report suggested it wasn't the case here either. So, but where, but where the, has mass immigration not brought down wages? Uh, it doesn't. If but where, you, if, where has it not done it? In European countries, where you have strong collective bargaining coverage, where... Well, what's where the, what's the average rate of unemployment in the Eurozone? Listen, Andrew, what is it? It's 10%. Here's, here's the basic economics. If you remove the incentive from employers to use uh, oh. immigrant labour as cheap labour, then right. they stop sending no, people out. No one has it. stricter labour laws than France. In fact, they have the kind of labour laws you would like in the mm. TUC. It's almost impossible to well, fire, they, fire, hire somebody. Checked, I think they're under pressure. They are, because, <laughs> and you know why they're under pressure? Because 25% of young French people are unemployed and French wages have barely moved in real terms for years. Andrew, and yet they've Andrew. had, they, like us have had a huge increase in immigration. Andrew, there isn't a shred of international evidence to suggest that by making workers weaker, you improve employment opportunities. So why are 25% of young French folk... Why are 25% of French folk unemployed? Well, I know that French unions tell me that as in this country and many others, people feel the balance of power has gone too far in favour of employers and the real solution okay. let, is putting some power back in the hands let of... Let me ask you one people. final question on this. If everything you say is right, if this huge rise in workers coming from elsewhere has had no effect on wages, why are wages only rising by 2%? We're still suffering from the crash, the banker's crash, and the failure to really years get... Ago. I know. And, we ha and what has happened since in terms of getting to grips with an industrial policy, financial reform... Yeah, but that's good. Banks, now, why are... Money if, if, flowing if, into if this huge increase in labour has had no impact on the price of labour. Why, eight years after the crash, are wages rising by 2% or, in many cases, less? But it was the crash that really damaged wages. And don't forget, of course, inequality was rising long before we had the crash, and many economies... You can't be happy that wages are only rising by 2%. I certainly am not. Okay. Uh, and, of course, if we don't get that demand uh, in the economy again, then we won't get the economy moving. We need money in people's pay packets to Indeed. buy goods and services. OK. Now, 
If you want more analysis of these employment figures and uh, what they tell us about migration, then you can go to the BBC Reality Check at bbc.co.uk forward slash reality check.